Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is going to be a continuation of the plant review series, and I've got an interesting one today that was in kind of fashion, and that might kind of give a hint towards what plant is, especially the name a few years ago, and it kind of, as quickly as it was the it plant, it kind of stopped being the it plant. But without further ado, the plant that I'm going to be talking about today is the Philodendron Birkin. And believe it or not, if I'm not mistaken, this plant is either three or four years old. I'll have it obviously in the title. As always with my videos, if you're coming back, Welcome back again. <laughs> you know what to do if you want to jump to a specific chapter. I'll have them linked in the progress bar, I guess that's what it's called, down below. And if you're new, welcome to the slight insanity that is this review series. Hopefully you find it useful. Some ground rules as always. These opinions are obviously going to be very biased to my experience with my plant in my conditions in the location that I'm at. There's no two ways around that. But as always with these reviews, I do encourage you if you've got this plant or if you've had it for a while and you've had good successes or failures with this plant, do drop it down in the comments down below. It's turning into a really good thing. It's turning into what I wanted it to be, which is a bit of a repository of information. So when people are looking to get a plant potentially, they can find out what other people's experiences have been with that specific plant. But yeah, without further ado, let's go into the first topic. So, background with this plant. And as I mentioned, it was a plant that was quite, quite popular. It was a bit of an it plant. And I would say this was a good few years ago now. It was definitely an it plant pre-pandemic. I'm trying to think now if it was an it plant in 2019 or 2018. So it was when kind of house plants become started becoming a bit more of a big thing for everybody, but not quite to the insane levels that happened during the pandemic where people were in lockdowns and they couldn't get out of their houses and everybody went for the rare plants. And essentially it is a plant and I'll bring it in and I'll, I'll see if I can add in some video close-ups potentially throughout the video just so you can kind of see what it's like up close. Some of you might be questioning and saying, you've seen a lot of big plants on my channel. This isn't a particularly big plant and it is quite an aged plant at this point. There are reasons about that and I will cover them in the rest of the video. But yeah, this was a relatively big plant. I was able to find it before it became a mass market plant because this at the moment, as far as I'm aware, and at least here in the UK and I would imagine Europe, I think quite a few places around the world. I don't know if in the USA this is still relatively difficult to find or if it's still really desirable. If you're in the States and you want to show your opinions on this plant and see and tell us if it's still difficult to find or if there's still even a, a want or a need for people to get this plant, do drop it down below in the comments. I'd be really interested to know. But yeah, I managed to get this before it got big really. So I was able to get this and I think this was another kind of eBay purchase. I don't think this was from a plant seller basically. So this was an eBay purchase and I managed to get it for a decent amount of money but I'll talk about that a bit more in the availability. It wasn't very hard for me to get. I did get it. I was enamored by the leaves but yeah, and I think the rest of it will cover in the rest of this video. So let's move on to the next topic. So speed of growth of this one, you might be able to get a bit of a hint from this plant in this specific media as well. So this was growing relatively fast for me. Relatively, it's not a particularly a plant that I think will get very big very easily, very quickly, uh, because to a certain level there is that variegation on the leaves. I'm not entirely sure if the variegation, I wouldn't imagine it's naturally occurring, so I'm assuming man has been involved somewhere or humans have been involved somewhere in the process of making this plant look the way that it does. 
I might be wrong. If you know that I'm wrong, do let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, it is it is a plant that I think could get bigger than what I've managed to get it. I specifically put it in pond because I found, and this is another thing as well that people tend to forget sometimes about pond, a lot of the huge plants that you see in my collection are still in my aroid soil mix, not in pond, and the ones that have moved into pond, I did it very, with a lot of trepidation basically, because Generally speaking, if a big plant is established in its growing media, and I covered this on a recent video as well, I generally don't like to disturb it too, too much because I find that they might throw a bit of a hissy fit. So with this one, I specifically put it in pond to reduce its speed of growth. But generally, I mean, it's it does bring out, and again, I'll try and benchmark it with a pothos plant as well. So with a pothos plant, if I'm getting two or three leaves in the summer, this might give me one or two leaves. So it's definitely not the slowest philodendron that I have, but it's also not one of the fastest ones, not by any stretch of the imagination. I think I, I'm trying to think, I do have slower philodendrons than this, but you know, it's, it's not one that you're gonna get a huge plant out of this anytime soon, at least not in my experience. As I said, I will always caveat that with the fact that I have got it in pond. So I did slow down its growth. It also had a few issues with root rot, both in pond and in the soil. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say about the speed of growth. Let's move on to the next topic. So ease of propagation with this one, relatively straightforward. You might be able to see if I turn it around, can you see the roots or the aerial roots more specifically with this one? Granted, and I have had a lot of questions on this, I probably do get more and larger aerial roots in my conservatory because for the people that have been here for a while and the people that have seen kind of conservatory tours and all of these things, they'll know that generally my conditions in this conservatory are not far off that of a big terrarium basically. So <laughs> it's nice and humid in here. Great for the plants, not so great for me. So yeah, um, it is very comforting though in the slightly colder months, if this place is warm and a bit kind of more humid, it's like a warm hug in the winter when the rest of it is like arctically cold. So it's, it is, it has got its upsides. And one of those obviously for the plant is that a lot of my plants, even ones that other people might struggle to get aerial roots on, tend to provide them for me quite freely basically. Obviously you would imagine that there would be probably even more kind of aerial roots on a plant that's this age. But the other thing that you need to remember is this is a plant that I have moved to three different locations with the humidity and the lighting conditions getting better every time I move. But in terms of the propagation, yeah, I mean, the, the biggest challenge I find, at least with mine, is that I find the space, the internodal spacing, and I'll see if I can bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see, yeah, you might be able to see there, the internodal spacing is quite tight. So it's actually getting something in there to be able to cut it. And for this, I would say probably something like a very, very sharp knife, ideally not serrated, and I will be doing a video, I don't know whether or not it's gonna come out before this one or after this one, but on my way of taking cuttings, and it might seem like the most basic thing in the world, but over the years I've picked up a lot of tips and tricks from watching other people, from doing my own research online on some of the best practices you can do, not only to ensure that the mother plant doesn't suffer from any form of rot, but uh, that also your propagate or your cutting does as well as it can do in any media. So it's a bit of a random video, but I thought, I'll put it out there and see if it helps a few people because I know that I've also got some newbies on this channel now as well and I kind of want to start addressing some of the questions that you all have as well. So yeah, with this one, it was relatively easy. As I said, it's a sh kind of uh, a close internodal space so a knife would probably be best. And other than that, yeah, it does propagate quite easily. I've done it in prolite, it was okay. I've done it in damp sphagnum moss, it was okay. I think I've also done this in soil and that was completely fine as well. So it's not a particularly difficult one to propagate. I will say it does take a while to 
not only root out, but to bring out new foliage. The other thing that you might notice about this, and I'll see if I can bring it in, some of the newest leaves on my one, and I kept seeing people online that were making these comments, I never saw follow-ups, and people were worried that it was reverting. I, a lot of the times on this plant, will get leaves, and this is not a brand spanking new leaf, but a lot of the times the leaves, when they come out on my plant, are just completely white. And it's almost like a Polaroid variegation, at least in my one. I don't know whether or not this is something that everybody's experienced, but the green stripes start coming in on the leaves as it matures. This might also be the reason why this plant isn't particularly fast when it's growing or particularly fast when it's rooting out. So what I will try to do a lot of the times is get slightly older leaves. So ironically enough, a top cutting with this I would always want to have a secondary leaf that has got maybe a bit more green on it in order for me to propagate it because otherwise it really doesn't do too well because if you'd imagine a tip cutting that's almost entirely white, it's going to struggle. It needs the green to develop within its own leaf first before it can throw down roots and that's where it can get a bit tricky and a bit sticky basically. But overall, not a particularly difficult plant to propagate. So moving on to availability, and I did kind of briefly touch on it in the background section, and you might be able to see that was one of the original leaves that came with this plant, I'm pretty sure it is, and it's still there years later. Yes, it's bruised and it's battered and it's it's probably going to be on its way out, but I've been saying that for a while, and it has got the smallest amount of variegation that you might be able to see there, but it is a solid green leaf. And the thing is that I always say with these plants, because again, I saw when people were really purchasing this, so they were really worried when it threw out a green leaf, I'm just like, leave it, leave it, you might get slightly faster speed of growth because of the variegation that's happening on the rest of the plant. So that is something to bear in mind. But uh, in terms of availability, yeah, I got it on eBay. It wasn't that expensive when I first bought it. I think it might have been low to mid double digits, basically. So it wasn't hugely expensive. I'll see if I can find a picture from my plant care app and add it here as to what it looked like when I first got it. I don't think it's changed too too much because as I said I've had a couple of issues with root rot which really knocked back the plant and it did take a while to re-establish again. I have a very sneaky suspicion I might be going through this again because I didn't start pulling back on the watering with this one early enough in the winter so I might have some rot in there but it is what it is essentially. With the plant after that kind of initial stage where I found it for relatively cheap because it wasn't quite as booming at that point on the market, eventually I think this went up to like low triple digits, which I don't know if I would have paid low triple digits for this plant. Definitely not after years of having it. But uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's very interesting. I don't think I have another plant that has any kind of... <sighs> specialized variegation or kind of like linear variegation like this which is so 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 consistent so there is that to be said about this plant and I've just realized I'm also wearing a stripy top so that was serendipitous but um, yeah it's it's a plant that was cheap because people didn't know about it it wasn't that easy to find at that point it then became really expensive and it still wasn't easy to find I have a very sneaky suspicion that it was retailers holding loads of these back because at the rate that they flooded the market at some point and it quickly dropped the prices down I'm pretty sure this is kind of very low double digits now to buy at least here I don't know whether or not you might be able to even get a small one of these for single digits but again, I haven't seen these come up on the market too much recently, so I don't know. I, I'm getting the impression that people have kind of fallen out of love with these plants. So, yeah. Pests with this one, and this has been an interesting plant because it's not been a particular plant that's a kind of a bit of a pest magnet. It really hasn't. I think on occasion I might have had spider mites, and I'm trying to think. I don't think I actually ever had spider mites. I've never had a mealy bug. Uh, I say this whilst also looking at the plant to make sure that there isn't any in any of the nooks and crannies. No, which is impressive in this place. Um, but, uh, oh no, 
found one, found one tiny one on an aerial route, but other than that, I don't think I can see them anywhere else, basically, on this one, but yeah. The, this is definitely a philodendron that is more kind of, at least it kind of grows out in a rosette form, so rather than kind of a climbing philodendron, so it will be a bit more compact. But I think maybe the only pest that I've had on this might be thrips, and I'll show you the back of this specific leaf, and you might be able to see there. Can you see, if I bring it over my face, it might focus, possibly. Uh, you can see some of the damage that's happening there. You might be able to see even on the front of the leaf as well. That isn't pest damage. I'm pretty sure that is uh, light damage, the so sun damage. So that's the other thing I will say about this plant is more so than any of my other variegated philodendrons or variegated plants generally, this wants as much light as you can give it, I found, in order to keep those white leaves being pumped out and uh, not get slightly more muddy, greenier kind of leaves, as much light as possible. The flip side of that is if you give it too much light, it can then start burning quite easily on the white sections, more so I think than some of my other variegated philodendrons. So it is a bit of a fine line, which again might be a reason why this plant isn't as popular as it used to be. Now moving on to accessories and kind of care on this one, I'm trying to think. I don't even have a support stick on this, this is kind of keeping itself up. There was <laughs> janky plant ties because it's tied up against my uh, shelf because if I was to leave this on here and I'm holding this but it will tip over basically, it's very forward heavy. And it's my bad, I should have rotated this plant and because it grows out in a rosette form, I would suggest if you've got this plant, start rotating it around just because it will give it a bit more of that light going around the plant and you might not get that kind of etiolation, which is again that leaning that you might be able to see here of that plant towards the light and you get all the leaves on one side and nothing on the other side, which makes it a bit meh. But um, yeah, as I mentioned before, I've had it in an aroid soil mix. It did okay. I've had it in terracotta when it was there, it did okay. I don't think I've ever had this in a net pot. I have had it in a plastic pot, all of those things were fine. I've had it in pond, that was fine. The one thing I will say about this plant is it does like to go fully dry and that's why I'm saying this is possibly not a plant that I kind of caught early enough when I was transitioning to less frequent watering now that it's cooler and there's still a bit of water in this um, drip tray, makeshift water reservoir, but, uh, and I will be probably emptying this out after this video because what I'm doing with a lot of my plants now that I didn't catch it, because essentially, <laughs> if anybody's from the UK, I don't think it's even this year alone that we've had this. Autumn is a bit of a myth here. We tend to go from summer to winter. There's maybe a day or a few hours of autumn and then <laughs> say hello to winter. But uh, yeah, which makes it a bit kind of snappy on when I'm just like, oh no, I've gone from watering this every four days in the summer to I need to water this every 20 days now. <laughs> so yeah, but um, yeah, I think that's the main things that I would say about this. I don't really need a support stick with this. I don't think it necessarily needs it. Again, if you rotate it, you should be fine. I don't think what else? It still gets fertilized every other watering, even in the winter, it's just I reduced down the volume of the fertilizer for this one. But yeah, I think that's pretty much, I mean, relatively straightforward care. It's not a particularly fussy plant. So I've put the plant down just so we can dive in properly into final thoughts. And this might be surprising for a lot of people. So I'll start off with the first question that I usually do on the wrap-up section, which is, knowing what I know now, would I purchase this plant? Probably not. It's, it's a plant that I fell out of love with exceptionally quickly. I think I was kind of already over this plant a month after I got it. Yes, it is impressive. Do I like that really structured? And again, this is just my opinion. You might have one, you might have had one for years and you might love it. Good. But as I said in the beginning of this video, this will be my biased opinion because this is my review. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, it doesn't really do it for me. 
Its growth habit is a bit weird. Yes, it's etiolated. For, and it's not even a particularly kind of heavy on the hassle type plant, but it still has some idiosyncrasies, like I was saying about the light levels, about kind of maybe having some root rot, and again, it might be my, my care of the plant rather than the plant having a tendency towards root rot. It is painfully slow. After as long as I've had this plant, I would have liked a large bushy plant. And the other review that's going to be either before this or following this, I haven't decided, but I am filming them both on the same day, is going to be for the Philodendron Prince of Orange. That one is again another one of these philodendrons that's a bit more of a rosette form. It's not a climbing philodendron. I have had that for almost as long as I've had this, and the leaves, each individual one of the leaves that's coming out now is probably not as large as my Esmeral Dense leaves, but not far off. So that, that is a substantial plant. It's a shame because I can't showcase it because, and you'll understand when you see that video, but uh, yeah, this one's just a bit underwhelming for me. And th this is the thing as well, it's really surprising to me because it was underwhelming really quickly. So I do question whether or not that's possibly one of the reasons that people fell out of love with this as well. And again, coming back to those crazy prices during the peak of this plant, I would have been really quite annoyed if I paid that much money for, again, for me, for such an underwhelming plant. Wow, I think this is becoming a lot more of a negative review than I thought this was going to be. Basically, if this plant dies tomorrow, am I going to shed a tear? Probably not. <laughs> and then coming on to the next part of the question, which is giving it a score between 0 or 1 to 10. For me, it's maybe a 1 or a 2. It's not the worst score that I could ever give to a plant. It hasn't annoyed me or disappointed me that much, but it's not a plant that I've personally enjoyed. Um, I think as a plant as a whole, if I was to give it a score, uh, probably a four or a five, and I'm being really gracious. Again, my opinion. I do not want to trigger anybody with this one. If you do have differing opinions, please, as always, drop it down below. Say how long you've had your plants. Give people an idea of what your conditions are, especially if you've grown it really well, and tell people why you love this plant. Or conversely, if you don't, and you kind of agree with me a bit on this one, have a rant down below as well. I'd love to see if I'm not the only one. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to cover on the Philodendron Broken. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.